Welcome to WCCM, breaking news by kids for kids. My name is Pi. And my name is Addie. And my name is Evangeline. And we have lots of fun in store for you today, including learning more about the Bank of America Student Leadership Program and a special report on freshwater fishing in Maine. In our first segment, newscaster Felix spoke with Equality Maine. <laughs> Welcome back to WCTM Breaking News. We're here today with Jake Karras from Equality Maine, who's here today to talk about the New Leaders Project from summer camp. Um, thank you for your time today. Glad to be here, Felix, thank you. Um, first of all, can you tell us a bit about the Equality Maine program? Yeah, so Equality Maine is a statewide organization operating in Maine that serves to advance the interests of LGBTQ Mainers. So that means lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, uh, queer, questioning, and the plus means others. So I think you belong here, you do. Um, so we advocate for policies in Augusta in the state house to make the state more welcoming. We do educational activities with young people. We work alongside healthcare providers to make sure that they know how to best treat LGBTQ people, um, as well as with teachers, students, and people all across the state from all different walks of life. Wow, well, that seems awesome. Um, so what is your New Leaders Project exactly? So the New Leaders Project is our biggest program that we do for youth every year. Since this year has been uh, difficult, to put it very gently, we have changed it so the New Leaders Project is online this year. We still have a lot of the same people that have been speaking in the past, as well as some new voices that have some really interesting words for the younger generation. Our first meeting was just yesterday, and we had three different people from different uh, career paths and different faith traditions speak about their experience being LGBTQ leaders. We had a rabbi from Rockland we had an executive director for a nonprofit working in Portland, and we also had a young elected official in Lewiston, all speaking to our group of young people about their experiences in leadership. So is that all over Zoom? How do you manage all that this year during social distancing? Uh, the short answer is we manage it very carefully. Uh, yes, it is taking place primarily over Zoom, which is the platform of choice for a lot of people. Um, but we've also been using a lot of new and kind of emerging technology, too, that really wasn't available in past years that's been kind of successful. So one thing that we're putting to use now is we have an app called YAPP, so Y-A-P-P. -P. It's designed for, like, big in-person conferences that take place over a couple of days. So everybody that shows up there has, you know, a schedule. They have a map and a layout. And we're actually using that with our new leaders so that they have, you know, a similar schedule. There's a social feed on there that they can chat with one another. Um, and we can provide updates to them through that. Um, so what can the kids expect to gain from the New Leaders Project? So the big thing that people love about the New Leaders Project in the past is that you get to just kind of spend five days with your peers, um, and often that's with other LGBTQ young people, and typically like young LGBTQ people don't have the chance to really associate uh, with their own people that much. So that's always been a big draw for a lot of the campers. This year, um, in the interest of public health, we had to make sure that we provide for everybody's safety first. But of course, they're still getting the opportunity to meet people from all over the state. And I'm sure that we already have people talking to other people from other parts of the state that they otherwise never would have. Um, so the social factor is definitely a big draw there. The other things are learning about issues that they would have never been exposed to otherwise. So of course, you know, in your middle and high school history classes, you learn a lot of things about American history and you learn about some social movements and not others. Uh, our students often get a very surface level uh, understanding of like the civil rights movement without a larger context of what the movement looked like and all the different groups fighting for equality. And often there's very little mention, if any mention at all, of uh, what was then the gay rights struggle and now has expanded to the full LGBTQ spectrum. Um, you know, in my high school class, I think we might have mentioned Stonewall, um, you know, one of the big defining events of the 20th century uh, gay rights movement, um, maybe one or two times, um, whereas we talk all about LGBTQ history, how it has developed over the past decades, how the courts have been on our side and sometimes not, and where we can expect to go in the future. I know I'm interested in the Equality Main um, organization. How can people get involved with it? 
So the best way to stay involved is to make sure that you're keeping up uh, with us on social media. We're very active on Facebook and Twitter. We also maintain a website that's regularly updated. So equalitymain.org is our website and all our social is Equality Main as well. So whenever there's a call for volunteers, it will go out over those channels. Um, and we also provide updates on all our events happening, on the new leaders project, on major updates in the courts, such as the Supreme Court, uh, as well as state level updates about what's happening in Augusta, for example, will all be put out during, uh, over those channels rather. Well, thank you so much for your time, Jake. Thank you so much for offering these opportunities to kids in our community and for all that Equality Maine has done to help promote equality. You've been watching WCTM Breaking News by Kids for Kids. Have you gone to any of the Pride events in Portland? No, but I've heard about virtual Pride events being held over Zoom instead of um, parades that usually happen. And a special thanks to Felix for having this conversation so we can all learn more about Equality Day. And it's nice to know that people are fighting for equality. We really need that, especially for these times. In our second interview, newscaster Serafina spoke with two Portland students who are part of the Bank of America Student Leadership Program. My name is Serafina Beasley with WCTM, and today I'm joined by Marwo Suge and Margarita Celestino, two students from Portland who are part of the Bank of America Student Leadership Program. Thank you for joining us today. For our viewers at home, can you tell us a little bit about the Student Leadership Program? Bank of America Student Leader Program is a six week long, it would have been a little longer than that, but with the pandemic, it's kind of six weeks. It's a paid internship that we learned at the nonprofit organizations. And we also work with one of them. And we also learn about the business and the real life leadership skills. We, um, we are technically learning about nonprofits and how they're funded and what it takes for them to be like qualified to be able to receive the funding that they ask for. What is your favorite part about your internship? I'll say everything, to be honest. <laughs> I have, I've, so far I've liked everything that we've done. And, but I'll also say when we are kind of hearing about different people and different panels, like the way, what they have been through and the different path and the different leadership they have implied to themselves and to their workplaces, the, I'll say that would be the best part. I think that my favorite part is just like learning the process, like how they apply and then how like the whole team needs to like have a whole conversation, read through applications and try to decide, which is really hard because most of the times this organization that are applying are really like competitive and they're doing a lot of work for the community. So it's hard to make a decision. Students selected for this program have strong ties to their schools and communities. Can you tell us a little bit about the work you've done with your community? I have done more than 14 teaching and paid. I was also volunteered at the page. I was a paid day at the House and the Senate. I also do every once a month volunteer at the Ronald McDonald and we also serve at the soup kitchen every Thursday. What kinds of activities are you involved in at school? So at school, I am part of the cabinet and I'm the cabinet chairperson at Casco Bay High School. And we, it's just like, like a school government type of thing. We don't have like a school president. We call it cabinet chairperson. And I'm part of the student union too. I'm part of the Black Student Union, which is different with the student union because the Black Student Union is like the space that the Black students within the school have to just discuss the, the problems they go through, not only at school, but also in the community in general. Um, I'm also part of the telling room and I'm an ambassador there because I was an, um, an alumni in one of the programs. So I was given the opportunity to be one of the ambassadors. Uh, I'm part of the Seeds of Peace too. Um, I don't know if you've heard about it, but like it's a camp where you focus on dialogue. And until today, like when they have events, I still participate. Um, I'm also part of the Make It Happen, which is like um, an organization or after school program that helps students with um, like bettering their resume so that they can have more competitive college applications. I am involved in different, probably 
four clubs and couple programs. I am involved in 4-H club, company of girls club, French club, international club. And I'm also part of the mentoring alliance program, make it happen program, GMG and any after school program. Thank you again for joining us, Marlo and Margarita. The work you're doing is amazing. My name is Sarah Fino with WCTM. That is so cool. Are you part of any clubs at your school? Well, I'm in a few different clubs. Um, some of them include like Quidditch team, which is an actual sport that's very fun. Or um, I do a lot of dance after school, and I think clubs are a great outlet to meet friends through or anything like that. And um, our school has a service club where we go around and we do things in the community. Do you guys have anything like that? Uh, yeah, my school my school does a few different things like that. Like we pick up trash around, and we have a club that like goes out and just does stuff to help the community. And yeah, I think it's really cool. Wow, I'm feeling really inspired after those last two interviews. There's so much social justice and change going around right now. I'm really glad to be a part of it. Before we check out our last segment, let's take a look at the weather. It's raining cats and dogs. And who knows what else? Stay inside if you want to stay safe. For our final segment, newscaster Abigail brings us a special report about freshwater fishing in Maine. My name is Abigail with WCTM, bringing you a special report on freshwater fishing in Maine. This is the equipment you need to go fishing. First, you need your fishing pole. This is the reel. This is the real release button. And then you, when you're casting out, you press the button. And then you crank it back with the crank. This is the swivel. And then this is the lure and the hook. Now, about the net. We have the net. So in case you catch a fish, it can't bite the line and go away. And then we have the tackle box. These are bobbers in case you, well, if you have live bait. This is power bait. They actually smell like it. And then these are the eyes. So you just attach on one of these things so it looks like it has an eye. These are the hooks. There's a lot of different size hooks. There's a bunch more in there, too. And then these things, so you can create separate apartments in your tackle box. And then last, I need my coffee, because I wake up really early. Hi, I'm Abigail, fishing here on Thompson Lake for WCTM News. Thompson Lake is in Oxford, Maine, and 13 miles wide. There's bass, perch, sunfish, whitefish, trout, and salmon. I hope we catch one of them, and let's see if the early bird does catch the worm. When you hook your bait, I recommend using live bait such as worms, salamanders, or lizards. And when you use live bait, you're going to put on a bobber. There's two ways to cast the line, but I'm going to explain the simplest one if you have a pole like mine. You're going to put the button on your finger, but don't press it until it's out on the water. You're going to swing it but make sure it's reeled up as far as it can go, really. And then you're going to cast it out and push the button when it's over the water, and it should go pretty far. Use the bobber just so it won't sink, uh, so the fish can still see it. It will float it. So it will go underwater, and you'll feel the tug. Then when you reel a fish in, you're just going to reel it in, and when it gets close enough, you're going to scoop it up with the net so it can't bite the line and go away. I think the best catch I've got when my brother really caught it first, he had, he didn't have a fishing pole then, so he had a stick with a blue piece of yarn tied onto it and my gecko bait on it. So he put it out and this huge bass came and bit it. I told my mom, make sure he holds on to that. What if a fish gets it and goes away? Because that's a really expensive lure. And then she's like, 
it won't go anywhere. It's on a blue string. It, no one will bite it. And then, so he just leaves it on the dock. Soon enough, the, the pole starts going and away on the dock. So they grab it and it's this huge bash. So of course it doesn't stay on because he doesn't have a hook on it. So I quickly switch lures with him and then I catch it. That is awesome. I would love to take a fishing class with Abiel teaching it. It would be super interesting and fun. I definitely just learned more from Abigail than the fishing classes I took. That's all we have for today. You've been watching WCTM Breaking News by Kids for Kids. My name is Addie. My name is Evangeline. And my name is Pi. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you soon. Have a nice day.